Well, survey says it's all over, but don't tell that to Democratic candidate for governor, state senator Wendy Davis. Uh, we, we looked at, at an average of polls, and this was uh, published uh, online, and uh, it sh says you're going to get whipped by about 15 points on Tuesday. You know, these polls are internet polls. They have been proven to be inaccurate in so many other races. And the real poll is underway right now. Voters are showing up either through their mail-in ballots that have come in or in the early vote. And what we are seeing across the state is very encouraging to us. The percentage of voters who are African-American and Hispanic has increased. The percentage of voters, those drop-off voters that we spent a great deal of effort trying to get to the polls has increased dramatically. And those are primarily our voters. So we feel very good about what we see happening on the ground. It is, it is much more sophisticated than a lot of people might think it is to, to actually track who is turning out. So you're sure. seeing in the early voting that people who might not typically vote in, in, a, in an off election year, in a midterm election year, are actually showing up to vote? Correct. About one in 10 of those voters who's coming out right now are those voters who don't participate typically in gubernatorial elections. And what our data is telling us is that about three out of four of those drop-off voters are voters for me. Um, one of the keys, and I remember this years ago with, uh, on election day with, uh, with, with Ann Richards' people, um, and they said it's the key for Ann Richards winning in that particular vote was suburban women, who are a little bit skeptical of the Republican Party. There, there's a University of Texas poll that shows that it is a dead heat, and, and traditional wisdom says you've got to win, win suburban women who maybe more naturally aligned with the Republican Party on some issues, but are a little bit skeptical about other policies. You know, women care about some very important things that matter to all of us, but they're particularly important to women. The education of our children. They know that in this race, they have a distinctly different path that we will go down depending on the outcome. I have a long, strong record of fighting for funding for our schools, fighting to make sure that our programs that are working for our kids are in place. And Greg Abbott has a strong and long record of fighting to keep our schools underfunded. And I think people understand they can't expect him to be any different as governor. And he's also said that he will veto an equal pay for equal work mm -hmm. bill. He's also, of course, demonstrated his disregard for women's rights in the reproductive arena, saying that he opposes uh, a woman's choice, even in the case of rape and incest. There was a, uh, an interesting article that I'm sure you saw in the Houston Chronicle. It was talking particularly about these suburban women. And, 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 se and, and again, it's not scientific, it's anecdotal. Right. But a couple of the women down near Houston, out in the burbs that they talked to, said, that wheelchair ad really turned me off to Wendy Davis. Do you have any regrets about that? You know, I, I don't, because the ad was about Greg Abbott's hypocrisy. It was about the fact that Greg Abbott had a tragic accident, and he rightly sought justice for himself. He sued a homeowner and a tree company. He got millions of dollars from that. But then in his career, he has actively sought to close that door to other people. A woman who was raped by a vacuum cleaner salesman, a company that failed to do a background check, which would have revealed that he had a sexual assault history Greg Abbott ruled that she shouldn't have compensation for that. He's pulled that ladder up behind him, and I think it's important for voters to know that. All right. Well, we should uh, add we uh, invited uh, Attorney General Greg Abbott to uh, join us here today. He declined. I think we're going to be talking to him on Sunday, however. Early voting continues 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. through Friday. Then Election Day is Tuesday. That's and right. We will undoubtedly be hearing from you again after that. Thanks Thank so you, much. Thank you, Tim.